Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to do a baby panel quilt using panel fabric. So let me show you what the quilt looks like, okay? Here it is. This is a circus theme panel quilt. And what panels are is it's one large piece of fabric with a pre-printed design on it. This one has a circus theme, so they all vary. There's cartoon characters and all types of themes on various panel pieces. So on the back of the panel is fabric here. In between the fabric and the panel is batting, and then around the edges of it is binding strips of fabric. So let me go over the supply list that you need in order to create this. Now, the, the size of the uh, panel fabrics will vary from one piece to the other. So obviously you're gonna need to purchase one baby panel. Like I said, the sizes will vary. Then you're gonna need one third yard of binding cotton fabric. Then you're gonna need batting, uh, which is you can either get cotton batting or polyester batting, and I'll go into this in more detail. Then you're gonna need fabric for the back and use cotton. Now the size of this will be determined by the size of your panel. So you're gonna purchase fabric that is three to four inches larger than your panel piece itself. Then your tools that you're gonna need, you're gonna need a small pair of scissors to cut the threads, then you're gonna need a rotary cutter, 45 millimeter size, a cutting mat. Now get a cutting mat, that get one that is as big as you can afford. They come in a variety of sizes. I wouldn't purchase one too small because it's gonna be difficult to cut. And then you're gonna need a rotary cutting ruler. Uh, I recommend a 24 inch long one by six and a half inches wide. If you get them too narrow, they're hard to control. So that's why get at least a six and a half inch wide ruler. Then safety pins, large, and straight pins that are large. Now if you need more help on how to cut out fabrics, watch the video tips for cutting quilt fabric and the link is appearing right about now in the upper right hand corner. So let me show, go over the batting. Here is cotton batting and this is polyester batting. I've used both when making baby quilts. Now the polyester batting comes in several different thicknesses. The extra loft is a little thicker, a little more cushy, a little softer on the baby. So I've used both. Either one will do just fine. Now when you go to purchase everything, remember how I said you want to purchase your fabric for the back and the cotton batting larger. So when you per select your baby panel, so let's pretend this is my baby panel right here. Lay out the baby panel on top of your fabric and batting and have them cut out a piece that's three to four inches larger than this so that when we begin putting all this together, the edges hang out past this quilt piece, all right? Okay, so let's go over the panel itself. So here's my panel right here. Let me get it all folded back up. When you purchase it, it is folded in half. So when you purchase it off of the bolt of fabric, it's folded in half. And this edge down here is called the selvage. It's usually white. And so it's folded selvage edge to selvage edge and it's bound so that it doesn't unravel. But when they cut it, as you can see, it's jagged and it's got threads hanging out. So when you purchase this, 
you want to wash this fabric first, but before washing it, you want to do a zigzag stitch along this edge before you put it in the washing machine because all of this will unravel. So then after you've done your zigzag stitch on both raw edges, wash and dry it. Then give it a good pressing with your iron. Then you're going to leave it unfolded and you're going to trim the selvage edges off. So you want to lay it out nice and flat. Take your long ruler, remember a 24 inch ruler is preferred, and on my particular panel, here's this yellow here. I really don't want to trim any of that off. I want to trim this selvage off. So I'm going to take my ruler and place it right along the edge of that yellow area. So place it there, and then you're going to take your rotary cutter. You're going to start up here at this end. Press down firmly with your hand and then with the rotary cutter you're going to begin to cut. And then when you get to the end of where your fingertips are, lift your hand and cut some more. And continue doing that all the way down along that edge to where you're cutting this selvage off. So cut off both ends that have the selvage. Then on your two raw edges here, you want to trim this also. So make sure it's nice and flat. And again, lay your ruler along that edge. Now I don't want to cut much of my yellow off if possible but I might have to get trim some of it off just to make it straight. And then again, do the same thing. Just go along that edge and trim your raw edges as straight as you can get them. All right, so set your panel aside and take your binding fabric. Here it is right here, okay? Now, when you purchase your binding fabric, again, you might have this jagged edge. That's why I always sometimes purchase just a little bit more than I think I need because it may not have been cut all that well. So I always ask for a little bit more. So now you need to leave your fabric folded, selvage edge to selvage edge. Smooth it out. Then take your ruler and lay it on top. And you're going to take this edge right here of your ruler and put it on the folded edge of your fabric. So line it up nice and straight all the way across. And you want to leave this hanging out because this is all jagged and you want to cut it straight. So again, do the same thing. Place your hand here firmly. Then Go along, start up here, and cut. Lift your hand and cut. And continue going all the way down that edge. All right, so now you've got this nice straight edge over here. Now you're going to begin cutting out your strips of binding. And you're going to cut four strips, four strips of binding. You're going to cut them two and three quarter inches wide. Leave your fabric folded in half. Cut them two and three quarter inches line. So you're going to go in this way on your ruler. Here's my two and three quarter inch line. Now, uh, a little helpful tip is to put some little sticky notes or a piece of tape in a couple of places on that line so you don't lose track of where your line is. Then you're going to take it and place it on the edge of your fabric and make sure that it's nice and straight. Okay, and then start up here. Let me line this up a little bit more. There it is. Start up here with your rotary cutter. And again, cut. Didn't think it went all the way through. And then lift your hand, cut, lift your hand, cut. And then 
move that strip over, line your ruler up on the next one, cut your second piece and keep doing that till you have four pieces cut. Then take your strips and you're going to cut this selvage off because it is not needed. So line it up and I usually will put a line on the edge of the strip so I make sure it's nice and straight. Then cut that off. So cut this off on all of your strips. Then you're going to take your strips and you're going to stitch them together. So you're going to take them, bring the front sides together of the strip. Let me turn this a little bit. So you're going to bring front sides together and stitch one quarter inch along this edge here. You're going to stitch all four pieces together. You'll have three seams when you're done. Go to your ironing board and press these seams open and nice and flat. Then take your strip, your big long strip, start at one end, fold it in half and press and keep folding and pressing going all the way down to the end of your strips. So now set your binding aside. Now let's look at this. This is my pretend quilt. Okay? So here we have my quilt piece right here. And you're going to layer everything together. So on the back is my fabric. Now you're going to put the front side of the fabric down to where you're now looking at the back side. Then take your batting and place it down. Then lay your quilt top in the middle so that you have extra fabric and batting sticking out around all of the edges. Then take your safety pins and begin pinning all the, the three layers together. Scatter them out all over. They can be about six inches or so apart. Just scatter them out all over. And if you look at this, I've got some quilting stitches on here. So I'm going to show you and give you suggestions for this. So let's look at some samples of it. Now, if all your machine has is a straight stitch like this, that's fine. This will work fantastic. You're going to start at one end and begin stitching across. So go in about three or four inches from this edge. Go in and stitch. Go over another three or four inches and stitch. And keep going all the way across your quilt. Then turn it and do the same thing. Go in three or four inches, stitch, keep moving across until you're all done. Now another option is to do it on a diagonal. So you can just turn it on a diagonal and do the same thing. Just keep going across and then turn it and go across. Now my advice to you when you're doing this top stitching is to roll both ends of your quilt in towards the center, okay? So that you can control it while you're stitching. That's a good recommendation. Now let me show you the samples of the wavy line. Your machine might have some decorative stitching on it. If you have this, this is a great selection also for doing it. You go about it in the same way. You just move in, stitch, move in, stitch, keep going across, and turn. Do the same thing. And here it is on a diagonal. All right, so you have a lot of choices out there for doing that stitching. Once you've done all of your stitching, then you need to trim this excess fabric off. So take your ruler, Line it up on the raw edge of your quilt top or your panel piece and then press firmly down and then begin trimming your edges off. 
go around all four sides of your quilt. Then when you're done with that, take your binding strip. Oh, by the way, this is what it would look like after you're done trimming. See, it's nice and clean. So there we go. All right, so now let's move on to the binding. Take one end of your binding and you're going to place it on, pick a side, any side of your quilt, and you're going to start somewhere in the middle. Now this is the raw edge of my binding. This is the folded edge. You want the raw edge up against the raw edge of the quilt top. Begin placing it down and lining it up along this edge. Then place pins all along that edge. You're going to do one half inch seam, but you're going to go in five or six inches from here. Go in before you start stitching. And then stitch along down towards that next side. When you get a half an inch away from this edge here, you're going to stop. Make sure your needle is down right in there. Turn your quilt top and stitch right into that corner, right in there. Then take it out of the machine. Fold your binding strip like that so that it's straight right along here. You've got this folded line right there. Put your thumb down or finger and fold the binding back across like this. Now this folded piece of the binding is up against this raw edge here. Line up your binding strip along here and begin pinning it down. So place pins all along that edge. And then you're going to start at the folded edge here, a half an inch in from there, and begin stitching down this next side. Every time you come to a corner, Leave your needle down, lift up your presser foot, and stitch into that corner. Do that at all four corners. All right, so you finish that. You've stitched all the way around. You're coming down your last side. You're going to stop stitching about five or six inches away from where you started right here. Take it out of your machine. Overlap your binding on top of each other and you're going to cut the excess off, but you're going to leave a half an inch of overhang and trim that excess off. Then open, open both ends of your binding and you're going to fold your quilt towards the binding strip so that it's easier to bring these two pieces together. Line up the edges of the binding strips Place a couple of pins there to hold it together and then stitch one quarter inch along here. One quarter inch. Take it out of your machine. Finger press that little seam open. Then fold your binding back down. Place some pins to hold it down along that edge and then stitch, finish stitching one half inch along that last edge there. Okay, we're almost done. Now flip your quilt over to the back and you're going to begin rolling this binding over towards the back. So you're going to take this folded edge and bring it past this stitch line. Okay, and then place pins. You're going to go all along the edge when you are at a corner, I'm going to show you how to pin around these corners. Again, pull this past the stitch line. It's so important. And place a pin here. Oops. And then go on this side. Fold it past that stitch line. And place a pin. Whoops, didn't get it all in there. Here we go. All right, now you've got this bump. Let me show you how to take care of this bump. Take a straight pin. I'm going to turn this just a little bit. 
you're going to press down and in like this. Fold it over and then pin. Fold all of your corners like this. Then you're going to turn it back over to the front. And let me get my next sample out. We're going to go back to the finished quilt. So, here's my binding. It's folded over. It's been pinned. Now you're going to do something called stitch in the ditch. That's where the binding and the panel fabric come together. You're going to stitch right next to it, but don't stitch on the binding. Stitch on the panel fabric. Okay? Right in there. Start in one corner. Do a few stitches back and forth. And then stitch right along here. Now, before you stitch all the way around all your sides, stitch a little bit, flip it over to see if your stitching caught the lower edge of that because that's some of the complaints I get. It's not catching it. That's because it's not folded past that stitch line. So, test it a little bit, then continue stitching all the way along this edge. When you get to the next corner, leave that needle down in that corner, lift up your presser foot, turn your quilt, and continue stitching down the next side. And when you come back around this last side here, stop at this corner, do a few stitches back and forth to tie it off, and then you are done, okay? So now let me show you the quilt again so you get another look at it. Isn't this adorable? This is such an easy project to do, and you can do this in a day. This is not going to take you weeks and days to do this, okay? Let me show you some samples of other baby panel quilts that you also could work your way up to, okay? Here's one. This is so cute. I just thought this one was adorable. It's got flowers and butterflies on it. This kind of little greenish yellow area here is one panel. But the pink fabric on the side is added on. It's called a border. And so you can buy a panel fabric, enlarge it, and make a larger baby quilt out of it by adding a border. And the binding is put on in the same way. So let me show you another one that's also a panel quilt. Now, this one's got dinosaurs all over it. I love this one. On this one, there's something over here on the edge called prairie points. And you're probably thinking, oh, that looks so hard, but it's not. It's a square folded in the shape of a triangle and stitched along the edge. Really a simple project to do. So here's another option. And by the way, the links are appearing in the upper right hand corner for you to click on to view those videos. Let me show you another one you can graduate up to. And this one is where you actually stitch squares together and then put a border around the edge. And you have an option for putting this adorable rickrack around the edge. Isn't this a cute little Easter Bunny baby quilt? Okay, well those are some choices you have to make. I hope you try to work with panel fabrics. They are a lot of fun. I work with panel fabrics all the time. I just love them. They're great quick projects. Now if you want to know more about what the Sewing Room channel has to offer, and you want to see all of the videos that we have, we have over 100 uh, tutorial videos in sewing. The majority are geared towards beginners. So in the YouTube search window block that's near your YouTube screen, enter the words The Sewing Room Channel and it'll take you directly to our homepage. And you can see the listing of all of the videos. 
Now to keep informed on all my future videos, click on one of my subscribe buttons. There's one down in the lower right hand corner, it's red, says subscribe. And then in the upper left hand corner towards the end of the video is a round picture of my face. Those are both subscribe buttons. Click on one of those, YouTube will ask you for your email address. Enter that information and the next time I have a new video, YouTube sends you a brief email with a big button in the center. You click on it and it takes you directly to my latest video. I'm Cheryl. I'm really glad you came to my sewing room. Now I'll see you next time and happy sewing.